Well, I figured it was about time to record some of my uh, work in progress on my aquaponics setup. So, um, I guess this is where I'll start. This is a 100 gallon tank that will be uh, where the fish will reside. Um, you'll notice there are a couple tubes coming back here. The upper one is the return, which will bring water back that's already been cycled through the plants. And then the one that sticks out the side there will be um, overflow. So that will be the top level of the water and the water will stay at a constant level right there. So anything that, um, you know, any changes will actually happen uh, in this up here, which is my sump tank. So um, I'll kind of walk through the system, but let's just uh, say we're overflowing a little water into our sump tank in here. Um, this is where there's going to be uh, a variance of water levels. Um, that's a 55 gallon drum that I recessed into the ground and uh, down in the bottom is the uh, pump and so uh, we'll start that you know pretty full but it will um, kind of cycle through different levels depending on uh, the ebb and flow of one of the, the beds that I'm using so you can see that um, the pump feeds out through the wall over here and uh, this is a filter that uh, my son and I made um, we uh, I'd actually acquired some uh, aquaponic gear from from a uh, guy that I bought the fish tank from and uh, we basically kind of stole his model and uh, uh, sort of made our own from it. He, he had a real good idea for uh, stuffing that with a sponge in one end and then um, some um, synthetic pillow stuffing material and that way you can open up the end cap and replace that material and what that does is just kind of gets out the big chunks of things um, and you know I don't know how often we'll have to change that but I'm, we will. Um, so that line comes over here to um, <coughs> to this system here. So um, what you'll see is this uh, bigger tube right here is the return that goes back over to the tank. And uh, what I've done on this is I've got a valve right here. So if I actually shut off the flow of the water up where the plants are, I've got some other valves, I can open that valve right there and it will just flow right back through there up in a closed loop back to the fish tank. But um, if you follow the one here on the left, this actually goes up to where um, the beds are going to be. And so um, I've got these exposed right now, but they'll be buried later. Um, so that uh, inlet line comes over to here. And you can see that it comes over to these three. Uh, and so these will be constant flow um, beds right in here. Um, with water coming out the other end. I've got um, return lines on the other end and each one of these have a valve that I can set and uh, change the flow of water. The other direction it splits over here it comes up to these two beds. Um, the one on the right is going to be an ebb and flow bed. Um, it's got a bell siphon which allows it to fill up and then it will drain and then it will fill up and then it will drain and I'm going to try to get that in about half hour cycles. Um, so the one over here on the left will be a constant uh, level and that's going to be a raft system where I'm going to use something like um, a yoga mat or something and float it on top of the, the fluid and then cut holes in the, um, the mat to recess plants in that will be sitting in constant water. So. The return then comes out the bottom. You can see the pipe coming out of that one over there and that one over here, and they join and go down to the ground and back across. And then these systems over here, the outlets come out these end, this end uh, of these three, and then uh, drops down. And then my return goes all the way back to the fish. And uh, that's the cycle. Hi there. Just wanted to give uh, an update on my aquaponics garden. This is my second video. Uh, if you have seen the first one, you saw how I had the system laid out to be plumbed. Um, still working through uh, finishing that off as far as gluing some of the joints. I should be done with that probably tonight. Uh, but I wanted to throw uh, a video up of an addition that I made here just uh, yesterday. Uh, one of my concerns with having my tank out with here was just stuff falling into my fish tank uh, or 
we have a lot of neighborhood cats, um, you know, cats getting in there and messing with the fish. Um, so I wanted to make some kind of a cover over it, but I didn't want to make it where uh, it was too cumbersome, where my kids couldn't come out here and feed the fish easily, and uh, where we could still see the fish. So I came up with this idea, which I um, have built, and it lays over the uh, lip of my tank. And all that is is um, just some window screen material that's on top of it. Um, and then I've got a hinged area here, which I can uh, lift up. And you can uh, get to the corner of the tank to feed the fish, or to get a little bit closer look, or get your hands in there for some reason. Um, so I think that'll work out real well. It'll keep off uh, the debris. If you can, uh, I don't even know if it'll come through on here, but I've got all sorts of junk that's down inside my tub right now from uh, the rain the past few days. It's, uh, there's a weeping willow tree right over this tank, and um, much of the weeping willow is now inside that tank, so I'm kind of wishing I had uh, done this a week ago. But nonetheless, it's done, and I think it's going to work out real well. Um, the return line is going to come back and just drop right through that screen and uh, you know I think it will also help sort of uh, you know if there's any big particles that end up coming back down the return line they'll end up you know sitting on top of that screen plus um, you know I guess it'll it should in theory aerate the water a little bit more as it kind of passes through the screen too so I think it's kind of a good design we'll see how it plays out but um, kind of feel good about the way it turned out if you have any uh, recommendations or suggestions, feel free to leave them in a comment. Okay, so what we've done is we've constructed a main above uh, above ground pond. The pond's dimensions are uh, 13 feet by 5 feet by 3 feet. Uh, we calculated it, and it's roughly around 1,500 gallons of water for the main pond. The fish, uh, the fish that will provide the nutrition or the nutrients for the system, will reside in here. Okay, so what we got then. Down here at the bottom of the other end of this pipe is a sump pump. It's pushing water up into what I've constructed, uh, what we call a swirl filter. This is the main, I guess I'll call it the heart and soul of it, because, uh, other than providing nutrients. This actually, the purpose of this is to uh, remove particulate matter, and I'll explain how that, how that happens. So, water comes in. to the swirl filter. You can see it down there, it's coming in, it's it got it at a 45 degree angle PVC. It starts a, uh, a whirlpool effect, a centrifugal uh, effect, so that any particular matter that comes into the swirl filter will be pushed towards the outside of the swirl filter and then eventually drop to the bottom. These two pipes here, this one here is the exit, this one is the overflow. One's a little bit lower than that one. Okay, so the water that's that's leaving the swirl filter through via that pipe comes out here. So the nutrient-rich water exits the swirl filter via this two-inch PVC. You can see the media beds here. Off of the off of them, I've, I'm teeing off one-inch PVC at the bottom of the lava rock here. Okay. At the bottom of the lava rock here is a manifold that the nutrient-rich water extrudes from. 
filling up the media a media bed that has the lava rock you can see how wet the lava rock is and that provides the nutrients and the water of course is the delivery mechanism for the plants it then the water exits via a drain at this end into another two inch PVC that goes all the way down here underneath and into what will be the feeder fish barrel. Okay, so this is what we call the feeder fish barrel. So once the nutrient rich water filters through the media beds, providing the nutrition for the plants and things of that sort, it enters into the, the barrel here, okay? And this is nothing more than just a receptacle to hold the water. We're gonna screen this off and then eventually stock feeder fish in here that will, will be able to transplant to the main pond to feed the main fish that are providing the nutrition to the plants. And so it exits back into the pond for re recycling. And there you have it. University of Wyoming research projects have a lot of interesting programs going on at all the times. And right now we have an interesting project here at the Greenhouse Research Facility in Laramie. Nate Story has one of those projects. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Um, so I'm doing essentially integrated aquaculture and hydroponics. So we grow fish in tanks and then we take the wastewater from fish production and we cycle it through hydroponic elements and the plants clean the wastewater so we can send it back to the fish. Um, but what it really does is it takes the liability of fish production, that's the waste produced, and it turns it into another product that we can sell. And actually a product that we're finding is worth a lot more than the fish is. Okay. And what kinds of crops are you growing in the vertical gardens? So right now we're basically doing a little economic study. We're looking at a bunch of different greens and herbs and how, um, how well they sell in a small town like Laramie. So uh, part, of, part of the deal with these towers is that they're modular. We can take them down and we can haul them to market whole. Okay. And people can pick their own greens and herbs at market. Wow, okay. Do you foresee that this is something that someone could have, say, at their home and have one tank with a few tilapia that maybe they were choosing to eat some of the fish and replenish the fish supply? It can work both ways. There are a lot of people that are already using these mm -hmm. in their homes. Okay. Um, or in their own personal systems. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking anything from like a 30 or 50 gallon aquarium mm -hmm. up to, you know, hundreds or thousands of gallons of, of aquacultural effluent that they're dealing with. So, okay. um, yeah, it, it can be done on a really small scale, and it can be done on a scale uh, where you're actually consuming some of the fish from your system. Okay. So you feed the fish so that the, you get the nutrients that you need for the plants. That's right. Okay. And we manage how we feed the fish to maximize the nutrients or to get what we want. Okay. Sometimes we're producing too much, sometimes we're producing too little. Uh -huh. The goal is to find the perfect kind of, uh, the perfect ground where we're producing just the right amount for plant production, um, but not so much that we end up with nutrient accumulation in our water. Right, okay. One of the other aspects that tends to be kind of interesting, we don't see a lot of verticality in most gardening in Wyoming. So part of, part of the reason we do vertical is because we're in a northern climate, we have lots of sun, sometimes too much sun. Um, but what but we also have is a really low sun angle in the winter. So in the winter the sun will come up and it'll just kind of skirt along the horizon and then go back down. And what that means is that angle of light hitting a horizontal crop is really, you know, it really minimizes the amount of light reception those crops get. So by flipping our plane um, vertical we have almost direct light from that low sun. I'm really looking forward to trying some of these herbs myself. For the University of Wyoming Extension, this has been Donna Quinn from The Ground Up. Well, sorry for the crappy video. All I have is a cell phone. I thought I'd show you the aquaponic system. Here is the fish tank. As you can see, it's been leveled off. 
water pumping in from the sump. And that pipe is the drain pipe. Over here is a ball valve to regulate the flow coming from the sump. And down here is another ball valve for pumping into one of the grow beds. As you can see, this one is getting very close to full. Maybe I can get a picture of, or a video of the bell actually working. And we keep going this way. This is the manifold coming out of our sump pump. This manifold actually has two spots for future expansion. And over here is yet another grow bed. Right now it's kind of turned off with another bell in there. And let's walk over this way. Yeah, this is a part of the IBC. That's gonna become a grow bed. Not really a grow bed, a raised bed, I should say. Here is the other grow bed. Unfortunately, the bell on this one's not working properly, so gonna to have to uh, tweak that a bit. Here's the outputs. Now, this is getting very close. Let's see, I will uh, record once the siphon begins. Let's get another update. Tank, nice good aeration. Fucked around with those pipes a bit. Now they're uh, both longer, one was shorter for a bit, but it kept draining too fast. And cans for something or another. Rocks for the grow bed number one. All the tops are dry. There's a little bit sprinkling out, should cover that up. The sump is now off of that cinder block, a little lower, and that seems to have helped. You can see that there was a piece of PVC cut and then a coupling put in, doing real good. Everything's draining just fine. Looks like one just finished. This grow bed is staying dry on top the way that it should to help eliminate evaporation. Yep, nice and low. Did very well on its drain. The third grow bed going nice. Dry on top. Actually about to uh, cycle. Can't introduce fish yet, but you'll notice the water's clear. That's because, well, drained out all the dirty water, got rid of all the uh, sediment for the most part. Reason we can't put the fish in yet is, well, the state of North Carolina won't let me buy ammonia without anything in it. So, 10% ultra ammonia. The reason I'm doing it this way is so I can not kill fish. Right now the water is way too high in ammonia level to sustain any sort of aquatic life. But hey, here we go. Give it a couple more days. Bacteria will be in the grow beds. Be transplanting some plants and throwing in some channel cats.